Alis dikit dikit yan, pumunta roon Oh yes, Leo, Donatello, Ralph and Mikey the boy band we loved during our childhood days. I grew up in the 80s, so that obviously makes me a 90s kid. We didn't have internet back then, cable TV was fairly new in our country, and only the rich can afford it. So we had the luxury of playing in the streets from 4pm to 7pm. News starts at 6 and it ends at 7 to 7.30. So by that time we get home, we watch our beloved 90s cartoons. Then we reenact the fighting scenes with our Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle toys or with our friends. We yell at our friend's house to call them out. No Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube. Life was awesome. Back then, we grew up differently. We had more parks, more spaces to play at, and we didn't have to pay for our time in these places. We get to interact with friends in person a lot, instead of texting or messenger services. There were more trees and wildlife around. We used to play with dragonflies, butterflies, frogs, flowers, and even turtles. So we appreciate animal or plant cartoon characters even more, because we've seen and touched them. You're gonna have to make me, and that's not going to happen. But now that everything's urbanized, we hardly see our beloved childhood loved ones. No more trees, less parks, less home for the animals. Now that we are decades older, and maybe a little wiser, we have more responsibilities. Time to put a stop what's destroying our childhood. No, I'm not talking about Michael Bay's version of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I know he's screwed up. Make that too. I'm talking about these. You can't touch this. The Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission is investigating it. Nilabas na ng TNT ang mga larawan ng kinatay na pawikan ng mga mangingis ng Chino na nahuling naglalayag sa half moon o hasanga sa shoal na bahagi ng pinag-aagawang teritoryo ng West Philippine Sea. May larawan din ang mga pawikan na hinuli ng mga mangingis ng Chino. Ilan sa mga ito patay na at nakasalampak lang sa bangka. Ang iba kinatay pa. Tansya ng PNP, nasa limandaang pawikan na itinuring na endangered species ng Pilipinas ang hinuli ng mga Chinese. What's the cause? Humans. But there are many of us who still care. Sa mundo, sabi ng mga eksperto sa mundo, pitong klase yan ng mga pawikan na yan eh. Uh, pero, doon sa, from seven species, lima lang ang pwedeng makita dito sa ating Pilipinas. So, ang hindi pwedeng makita dito sa ating wala tayo sa Pilipinas, yung Kemp's Ridley at yung Flatback Turtle. So, ang mayroon tayo dito sa Pilipinas, uh, uh, Loggerhead, Leatherback, Hawksbill, Green, at uh, Olive Ridley. Pero dito sa amin sa Bataan, tatlo lang. Wala kami dito ng leatherback at loggerhead. So ang dito ang pwede makita dito sa, sa bataan, um, hawksbill, green, at olive ridley. Ang pinaka-common ay yung olive ridley dito. May, meron, marami din dito ng, ano, ng uh, leather, uh, I mean, hawksbill at saka green. Pero seldom na umitlog sila dito sa amin. 
talagang umiitlo dito yung olive oil. Na-establish kami noong Tapawika Center, 1999. Ang mga nag-organize sa grupo namin, uh, Protected Area and Wildlife Bureau, sa, do sa bureau na yon may isang section na PCP, Pawikan Conservation Project. Yung PCP na yon at saka isang malaking NGO, kung na narinig nyo na yung uh, PRRM, Philippine Rural Reconstruction Movement, nag-merge yung dalawa na yon at nalaman nga nila na dito sa Magbalayong Bay, itlogan ito ng Pawikan, pero wala naman nagiging na kaya nakakai lahat ng tao. So yung dalawang yon inimbita ng mga posters at inorganize sa isang grupo na magpuprotekta ng pawikan. Taong 1999 yon Pero hindi ganun ka-smooth na natanggap pa ng mga poachers. Kasi siyempre, uh, nagdidemand din yung mga poachers na i-give up nila yung egg collection pero sana may alternatibong livelihood dahil uh, madidisplace sila eh. Nakumbisa na rin ang bandang huli. So, 1999, nagsimula na ako yung parami ng pawikan. At, wow, uh, akala mo ba, heads up kami dahil 1999 hanggang sa ngayon, ang dami na namin na pakawalang inakay ng pawika. Meron ng 100, uh, more than 160,000 na inakay ng pawika. Na dati-dati hindi naman nagka, lahat na itlog nasa kasirola. Kaya sa ano, sa dibdib, ako bilang pangulo ng grupo, sa dibdib ko, wow, talagang lutang na luta ako. Gusto, napaka, napakaganda na naging resulta ng aming pagbubulang tiyo. Actually, way back, 2005, when I do my exploration through biking, so I saw this kind of conservation center. Nagkaroon ako ng curiosity na what kind of center is this? Pawikan Conservation Center. Parang there's something in it. After that, sabi ko, oh, there's something na maybe we can help this community. 2008, yun yung first namin na nagpunta rito. And then from there, doon na kami nag-isip ng kung ano yung pwede namin magawa. I uh, discovered it by accident. So I'm driving all the way. Coming from Mariveles, I saw a signage that says how we can send her uh, this way. I saw it, I saw the conservation effort. Nila. It's really very you know, beautiful, from, uh, very life-changing. So I decided to... Ano, and uh, we, have, we had lots of challenges before. Ano una kasi yung mga tao hindi sila ganun ka-open. Eh. So ang daming tao nga, yung Pawikans kasi in, in the general misunderstood din sila eh. So ang dami namin inabot na criticism when we started this. Ang unang-unang criticism na inabot namin dito is why you guys are, yun pinakikialaman ninyo yung life cycle ng mga, mga pawikan. That's the biggest hurdle that we have to address, no? Uh, sa amin naman, for those people who believe in that, nire-respeto naman namin yun because there are scientific evidences na minsan kapag may human intervention, it, it reduces the chances of survival. However, in this place kasi, since it is a nesting ground for the olive ridleys, uh, hindi na natin mababago yun. Eh. Hindi naman natin pwede sabihin sa mga olive ridleys na uh, lungba na kayo na ibang lugar. Because they've been doing this for millions of years. However, as humans, nandito na tayo, ang ginawa nila dito, ang mga tao, meron ng community. So ngayon, ang ginagawa ng mga community na yun, so, marami sa kanila kasi before dito were poachers eh. So marami sa kanila ngayon dito na convert na into volunteers. So ngayon yung mga tao dito, ang uh, inisip nila to protect it, kailangan mag-intervene tayo kasi marami siyang natural predators na pwede nating makita. So and the biggest one is humans. So siguro ngayon kung we are the biggest threat, siguro we are also their biggest ally. So maybe if we can help to uh, spread the word uh, how to protect the pawikan and and Maybe from there, may balik natin yung dating dami ng pawikan. Kasi again, their future is our future. Ah, siguro ang advice namin is this activity is a life advocacy. Siguro sila ganon den, di ba? Na ang gawin nila, minsan lang tayo mabubuhay, di ba? Sabi nga natin, one percent yung chances nila in the world. Tayo den, it's a miracle that you are here. It's a miracle that we're here today. So, why don't we help them? Why don't we help them? Let's make our life meaningful. And one of them, maybe, is this one. The conservation of power. We love turtles. But in order to love them, we must understand how they live. Here's a glimpse. Sea turtles are miraculous. First, they've been around since the late Jurassic, roughly 150 million years ago. Cohorts of the dinosaurs, sea turtles have survived through the challenges of eons, existing still today where many others have ended their evolutionary run. Second, throughout the centuries and up till today, every living adult sea turtle has overcome the odds. 
existing as a consequence of chance, skill, and capability. The gauntlet each sea turtle faces in the course of its lifetime goes thus. First, deposit as a clutch of leathery ping-pong ball-sized eggs into a nesting pit dug by its mother high on the beach. Of the 50 to 200 eggs laid, roughly 20% will never hatch. Roughly a month and a half after having been laid, the surviving eggs hatch, and the young turtles, each small enough to fit in the palm of your hand, squirm to the surface, emerging from the sand in mass and making their desperate dash for the sea. Along the way, debris, pitfalls, crabs, gulls, raccoons, and other threats will claim roughly 50% of those who rose from the sand. For those that actually reach the surf, they trade one set of threats for another as they first face the repelling force of the waves and then find a whole new host of predators awaiting them. Various fish, dolphins, sharks, and seabirds as the young turtles come to the surface for air. For their first few days of life, should they count themselves amongst the living, the vulnerable turtles swim frantically forward. Ultimately, they will often look to settle in a patch of flotsam, preferably a patch of floating seaweed. Now for the next several months, they will seek to avoid those that would eat them, find that which they might eat themselves, and not fall to the pressures of challenging weather or unfortunate currents. In this phase, roughly 50% of those who reach the surf will perish. Ultimately, with the passage of years, the survivors will increase in size, from that of a dinner plate at year one to that of a dinner table, in the case of one species at least, the leatherback, a decade or so later. With size comes some measure of protection. The only truly worrisome predators now are some of the larger shark species, bulls, tigers, and whites, and the occasional killer whale. At approximately two decades of age, the survivors will be old enough themselves to breed and continue the cycle which their very existence heralds. Of those that began as eggs on a distant beach, now less than 10% remain. At least, those were the odds prior to significant human interference. Over the past century, and in particular in the last several decades, human endeavors from beach development to plastic refuse to poaching, long lines, nets, and even noxious chemicals, including oil, have upped the ante for sea turtles, causing their survival rate to drop to around 1% or less from each nesting cycle. It is this added human pressure which has pushed each of the eight sea turtle species into either a threatened or endangered state. For while they have evolved to overcome a host of obstacles, the most recent has arisen so quickly and at such scale that the species find themselves overwhelmed. So let's quickly recap this cycle of odds. Using a hypothetical nesting season, for females may nest multiple times in a single year, of a thousand eggs for sake of ease. 1,000 eggs laid, 800 hatch, 400 make it to the water, 200 progress toward adulthood, 20 survive to breeding age, that is, without human interference. Two survive to breeding age with human interference. So, a breeding adult sea turtle is the very embodiment of a long shot. It is the exception, not the rule. A jackpot. It is, in a very real sense, a miracle. Wow. Some life of adventure, pain, sacrifice, and it just got tougher. So what can we do? Since humans are the cause of making their life harder than it is, it is also humans who can make it easier. The humans who care decided to interfere with the natural way of how turtles live. Here, we make sure that the baby turtles make it to sea, hoping we get 100% of them out there. Yay! As simple, kung kami na sa conservation ng pawikan, hindi ko naman sinasabi na, sige, i-focus natin lahat ng ating atensyon sa pagpuprotekta sa pawikan. Ang general na dapat natin pa pangalagaan ay ang kalikasan eh, kapaligiran ng kalikasan. Una-una yung basura. Alam mo ba dito, sa Pawigan Center, kapag ka meron kami naka-schedule ng mga, mga bisita, especially mga foreigners, agad iniisip ko, ako may nakita akong basura doon sa kalya. Agad yung pinupuntahan namin yun. Hinahakot namin yung mga basura na tinatapon lang ng, ng mga walang pakialam ng mga, mga nakatila dito sa community. Kaya dapat sana ma-educate ma o kaya yung mga tao na nakapaligid o kaya mas at yung mga buong komunidad dapat maging disiplinado sa sa masura, maging mapagmahal sa kaligasan. Okay, malaking bagay kaya yun ilan ko. Hindi lang pawikan kundi 
sa dagat, napakaraming puprotektahan ng mga marine lives. No? Tsaka yung mga sobra-sobrang, lalo na yung mga, yung mga destructive method ng fishing, dynamite, poison, cyanide, you know. Tapos yung mga, kung sasali, yung mga lambat ng mga sira, tinatapo lang sa dagat. Alam mo, ang common cause ng death ng mga pawikan sa dagat, ay na-entangle sila sa mga unattended na gillnet. Hindi, hindi lang isa. Isa o ilang grupo ang responsable sa pangangalaga ng kaligasan. Hindi lang ang pamahalaan ang responsable sa pagpoprotekta ng kaligasan. Dapat ito ay obligasyon ng mamamayan. Once they do, it seems like they also have a poor chance of survival, right? We can't swim out there to protect them all the time. Well, there's a topic of climate change. I mean, what? You see, this affects them gravely too. Before we go on, let's do a quick look at why climate change is according to it. This is the world. That's you and that's me. The world has the perfect temperature to keep all living things alive and happy. This temperature depends on a balance. The sun's heat goes to earth to make it warm. The sun's heat bounces back to space to make the earth cool. When this balance is lost, the climate changes. The earth's climate has changed many times before. This is called natural climate change. It's caused by volcanic eruptions, changes in the sun's energy, and changes in the earth's orbit. Greenhouse gases also make the earth warmer. They trap heat from the sun. Greenhouse gases are like a blanket covering the earth. It started in the 1700s. Humans started to build more things. We burn coal to make electricity. We burn oil to make our cars and planes move. We use chemicals to make things. We cut down lots of trees. We burn gas to cook food. We dump lots of trash on landfills. We plant a lot more rice. All these things release greenhouse gases. Remember the blanket over the earth? Because of humans, it got much, much thicker. When I get hot, I sweat. I even get dizzy. Imagine the Earth. Because it's hotter, glaciers and ice sheets are melting. Seas are rising. Storms are getting stronger. Some places are getting dry. Even the sea is getting warmer. All living things are in big trouble. So what should we do? We need to change the way we live so we can stop releasing so much greenhouse gases. That way, the Earth's blanket will go back to normal. We also need to be ready for what climate change will bring. So how does it affect them? You see, temperature determines the gender of the turtle. It has been found that eggs incubated above a pivotal temperature of about 30 degrees Celsius or 86 Fahrenheit develop into females and those below 30 degrees develop into males. So what happens if temperature is getting warmer and warmer? Turtles can't go to the shore. It will toast them. And as for the eggs, we really can't afford an all-female club. Temperature rises, coral reefs begin to die, so as feeding habits disappear. As for their homes, temperature rises, sea levels begin to increase, nesting habits disappear too. Then of course, the topic of rising waters. As we all know, the warmer it is, the stronger the typhoons are, ice melts, flooding, island sinking, so our friends here lose their home. Just like humans, if you take something big, something that's been there for a long time, out of their lives, they lose their way. This affects all species of marine turtles. Make that all sea creatures. Coral bleaching also means fish lose their homes and food source. What can we do? Well, there are a lot. Pretty scary to think of all the dangers of climate change. In the past, we've learned together why we should care. But today, let's find out how to be proactive about the situation. One way to help is to drive less when you can. Rather than using your own personal car, try to carpool or use public transportation. If your destination is close enough, maybe even consider walking or riding a bike. Carbon dioxide or CO2 is a major contributor to climate change, and vehicles are a large portion of the CO2 humanity produces. In fact, it's estimated that for every two mile car trip you take, two pounds of CO2 are put into the atmosphere. Please thank all those kids riding skateboards, because they're kind of saving the world. Even though they won't get off my lawn, you can also help out by by recycling and reusing things when you can. 
Rather than throwing out all your gadgets and gizmos, see if you can find another use for them or donate them to charity if the product is still good. Recycling helps fight climate change because it takes less energy to make something from recycled products than starting from scratch. Also, consider buying things with less packaging in the first place, or items that use recyclable packaging. This next one might be a little scary to everyone who has ever taken part in the war for the thermostat, but I challenge you to try and let your homes be a little warmer in the summer and a little colder in the winter, even if it's just by a few degrees. Moving your thermostat up two degrees in the summer and down two degrees in the winter could eliminate an estimated 2,000 pounds of CO2 a year. And believe it or not, your diet can play a huge part in the climate change battle. Consider eating less meat when you can, as the animal agriculture industry emits a large amount of greenhouse gases. The livestock sector, which includes things like feed production and transport, is responsible for around 14% of all the greenhouse gas emissions around the globe. I'm not necessarily saying you need to go vegetarian or vegan, but maybe try things like meatless Mondays or pick a plant-based option for even just one meal when you could have had meat. Every little bit helps. I know that kale salad looks scary, but you could do it. It should be noted, however, that it might not be as simple as all plants are better for the environment than all meats when taking everything into account, such as the energy required to produce the food. Overall, though, plant-based diets seem to be better for the fight against climate change than meat-based ones. Another thing you can do is inspire others to join the fight against climate change. This can be as simple as talking to your friends and family about the issues, or organizing groups and events in your local community. You can even contact your government officials and urge them to take action and have policies that lead to a healthier, greener future. And think about this, if you lose your world, well, then I kind of lose mine. Stay humble, and then uh, create a certain legacy that will remember you. Touching na nangyayari nun, kasi nung magre-release na kami nung uh, hatchlings, so, tapos biglang sabi nung father, oh, sandali lang mga anak, sabi niya, huwag niyo munang ibaba yung... Ang sabi nung father, uh, ganito, alam mo ba anak na yung ano na yan, pawi ka na yan, has a very little chance of survival in the wild. So ibig sabihin, kapag ibinaba mo yan, hindi mo alam kung mabubuhay sila. Pero isipin mo na kapag inilagay mo yan, mali mo yung ibinaba mo na yan, Will serve, yan yung magsusurvive among all of the nirelease dito sa Pawikan. So it means, uh, yung gagawin mo ngayon, it is very meaningful. Ganito, maganda anak, di ba, inadapt mo siya as part of your family. And there's a time that you have to let him go. So you have to give it a name. Tapos sabi na, ibaba mo ngayon yung Pawikan. Pero ha, bago mo siya habang, ano, habang ibinaba mo siya, you have to let it go. Then habang nagkocrawl siya dun sa ano, you have to say a little prayer for a safe journey. Kasi darating yung panahon na yan that many years from now, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, even 100 years kung nagbubuhay pa sila, they will go back to the shores and lay eggs for future generations. So nung, ano, nung sinabi nung, nung father na yan, talaga natouch ako, parang sabi ko, oh, ibang klase ito ah. Tapos nung binaba ako na sila, uh, parang ang sarap ng pakiramdam na ginakawayan mo sila, you, 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 you give them a, uh, a message of good voyage, na you take care out there and many, many years from now you will go back Maybe I'm no longer here, but sana maglay ka ng eggs for uh, future generations. Uh, it, it never, ano, it never failed to amaze me every time I, I tell that story. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, no, it's, uh, it's a life-changing moment for me. Kasi naramdaman namin yung ano nila eh. Yung kanilang uh, goal, yung kanilang desire to help. Uh, the, the conservation, the marine turtle. So, naisip ko lang na tayo rin kasi as humans, di ba? Uh, nung I remember, I remember this quote from Sir Manolo na sinabi nila, uh, ang survival rate ng pawikan is around 1% lang yung marine turtle. So, kung 1% lang, siguro para din tayo, eh, para din mga humans, di ba? We are given uh, a once in a lifetime opportunity na mabuhay sa mundo na to. So, kung tayo yung 1% tayo na binigyan din ng pagkakataon nun. Bakit hindi natin gamitin yung uh, life natin para tumulong sa Mother Nature? Kasi ang, uh, one of my stand kasi in life kasi na tayo, uh, we will only live once. Okay? And uh, if we will value Mother Nature more than our bank accounts, I believe the world we live in will be a better place, diba? We love sea creatures. We love turtles. They play an important role in ocean ecosystems by maintaining healthy seagrass beds and coral reefs, providing key habitat for other marine life, helping to balance marine food webs, jellyfish and algae as food for fish, and facilitating nutrient cycling from water to land. It's very personal for 